This week on Machinery PTV, a chapter closes on a farming life with the Davidsmeyer Farm Estate Sale in central Illinois. This classic John Deere D gets an electric update, and we'll look at a country legend's connection to farm machinery. Your machinery is a serious investment, and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machine Repeat TV. Now, on our menu for you today, we're gonna watch a pair of New Holland tractor cell low hours, a grain cart, three gravity wagons, and a pair of trucks. Now, before we have all this fun, we gotta throw it back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm equipment news. Thanks, Greg. I'm Betsy Gibbon. New information from the Association of Equipment Manufacturers and Oxford Economics is calling for a positive trend in the sales of tractors and self-propelled combine sales for the next several years, thanks to trade concerns relaxing. That's despite a small drop this year. AEM reports the ag machinery industry grew better than expected last year, up 3.2% to more than $15.5 billion. And a surprise from Deere and company delivering unexpected increases in earnings. It reported a fiscal first quarter profit of $517 million. On a per share basis, the Moline, Illinois based company said it had a profit of $1.63. The results beat any Wall Street expectations. The agricultural equipment manufacturer posted revenue of more than $7.5 billion in the period. The company's CEO saying that farmer confidence has improved, in part due to hopes for a relaxation of trade tensions and higher ag exports. The company's stock has climbed nearly 4% in the last 12 months. Cargill is getting into the plant-based burger business. The global food and agriculture company announcing its new private label plant-based patties and ground products, saying the products will hit retailers and restaurants in early April. Now let's take a look at some recent auction prices from around the country. That's it for news. Now back to our host, Machinery Pete. Don't touch that dial, folks. Coming up, more blue goodness you're not going to want to miss. A 2009 New Holland T8010. This thing's only got 1,971 hours on it. Hey folks, I'm here with Penny Davidsmeyer, and Penny, gosh, we wish it was a different circumstance we were here today, but uh, Martin, your husband, passed this spring? Yes, May 11th. Okay, and you guys had farmed a little under a thousand acres here around uh, Virginia, Illinois? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And Family was, farm. But you did not, now you did not grow up on a farm, right? No, no, no I was a, a city girl, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so how was that like as you guys started your farming uh, career? Oh, well, it was an eye-opening experience because, well, Simply put, I'd never seen anything give birth before. Okay. And he was at ISU, and he worked in the uh, f on the farm in the beef department. Sure. And I was pregnant, and the first thing I ever see born was a calf he pulled with a log chain. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the farm. <laughs> it was welcome to the farm world, Penny. <laughs> wow. Uh, but now you you farmed right with Mark. Yes. I mean, you. I've heard. You, just before we started filming, you were talking to some folks about the combine. Yeah. I think you convinced them to buy this thing. Oh, right? I don't know about that, but I didn't want them to go with out greasing this one zerk that I didn't know about. Right. So, right. so over the years, Penny, uh, how would you describe uh, 
I mean, your life on the farm. Did you, it just became a, a part of you? Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine ever living any place else. Mm. Um, I have a cousin that I go visit in Chicago and I love the city, sure. but I can't imagine not living with open spaces around right. me. Well, a year and a half ago, folks, I saw three New Holland T8010 sold at auction with between 1,300 and 22 hours on them, and they sold for 62.6 up to 65,000 bucks. Now, on our auction today, we got an 09 model with 1,971 hours and super steer. All right, folks, time for a Brent grain cart. Now, last year at auction, I saw them sold anywhere from 3361 bucks on the low side, online auction in Arkansas, up to 9550 on an online auction in Iowa. Average sale price last year, $6,981. Five, 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 three, four, down sixty-five, down seven and a half, yeah, again, sixty-seven and a half, sixty-seven and a half, and a sixty-five and a half, and a seven and a half, and a sixty-five and a half, and a seven and a half, and a sixty-seven and a half, and a half, and a seven, I didn't get you seven thousand internet, I didn't get you on site internet, y'all gonna be seven thousand. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. Every good season starts with one great deal. Get yours today with Farm Hard Rewards, going on now at your local certified Firestone Ag Tire Dealer. Stop in before April 30th and buy two or more eligible Firestone Ag radial tires for one instant discount. 
Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com. Well, something a little different for you this week in our dealer segment, folks. This is from our latest Machine Repeat podcast episode, an interview with Tim Brannon. Now, Tim is the owner of b g Equipment in Paris, Tennessee. I tell you what, Tim knows more about Alice Chalmers Agco Gleaner history than anyone I've ever met. Tim grew up around Alice Chalmers tractors on the farm. He went to work for the company right out of college in the mid-70s and became a dealer in 1978, still that uh, owner of that dealership today, b g Equipment, Paris, Tennessee. Now, in the podcast, Tim shares some amazing stories about Alice Chalmers' history and a couple stories in particular about Loretta Lynn, yes, the coal miner's daughter, country music legend. Now, Loretta and her husband, Mooney, had all Alice Chalmers' equipment on their dude ranch, and Loretta was an ambassador for Alice Chalmers' equipment. They would set aside so much land for Alice Chalmers to use in demonstrations. And down through the years, into the, uh, from the late 70s to the early 80s, uh, Alice Chalmers would bring customers and farmers into the uh, Loretta Lynn Farms, and they would have field days and training days. Uh, also, Loretta would do a concert or two a year for uh, wow. the use of the equipment. So. Cool. It wasn't given to them free and clear. They had some sure. obligations. They had to give up so many acres of land, and Loretta had to agree to do uh, some concerts, which she freely did. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ones they did, I think, was down in Orlando, and they presented her with a shotgun. And uh, she said, oh, uh, it's a beautiful shotgun. It's a beautiful shotgun. And Lynn Shriver said, now be careful, it's loaded. She said, oh, no, and she pulled the trigger and they had a blank in it, and the gun Ooh. went off. And of course, everybody everybody was just, uh, you know, kind of stunned there for a minute, and all of a sudden, this big deer fell down from the rafters. <laughs> it was, the place just went wild, you know. <laughs> Welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, we've got a real beauty for you from West Virginia. Owner James Gray likes to show off this classic D. Shortly after he purchased this deer from a farm in Indiana, he added an electric start. He says it makes a world of difference. Nineteen thirty-eight John Deere D hand start, but then in 1938 they had an option where uh, you could put electric start on it. And my boy found electric start in Portland, Oregon, and then we brought it and uh, put the electric start on. But I showed it for many years, hand starting it, and much easier with electric start. I bought it up in Indiana, I think it was 1998. It had an old restoration on it, and then we freshened it up quite a bit, had a new rebuild in it. We did a little bit of paint, so it has, it's just an old restoration now. We haven't done anything to it basically for years. I just show it in parades and things like that. I put a new manifold on it so that I could put the twin, uh, the dual exhaust on it. That's really the only modification it has other than an alternator. And I have the original um, generator, but I wanted to make sure that the battery stayed up, so I used an alternator on it. Last year I took it up to Logan, Ohio, up to the Warsport Festival, and we took it through town there, and it makes quite a racket. and gets good attention. I don't think they see the tractor, they just hear the noise. The old D's are such a dirty vehicle, uh, you just can't keep them clean. Maybe in a few years we might re-restore it. Mechanically it's fine. It'll probably never need restored in my lifetime again. Hopefully someday I'll turn it over and let my boy have it, because he really likes it too. We'll try to keep it in the family if I can. Hey, stay with us folks. Coming up, our feature item on the show, Big Blue, a 2008 New Holland TJ380 four-wheel drive, just under $2,200 on it. No other cornhead works like a Drago. 
or pays you back like one. Visit your Drago dealer and see how you can justify owning a Drago on ROI alone. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com. All right, folks, time for our feature item on the sale today, a 2008 New Holland TJ380 four-wheel drive, 2,176 hours on it. Now, three of the last four of this model I've seen sold at auction have gone between 63,000 and 70,000, but last night on this one, the online bidding was already up to 63K. 66,000 online, 67,000, 67,000, 67,000. 67, you know what? It's against the law. It only bid one time. <laughs> you got you got the color, you got the shirt, you got the new Holland hat. Give seventy one thousand, old buddy. Ah, uh, come on, seventy one. Ask her. What she thinks. Seventy-one thousand. Seventy in the table seventy pound dollars and seventy one pound dollars. Still online in Leroy, Michigan. Seventy one thousand seventy one thousand. Ladies and gentlemen, the gamble's high. Seventy thousand seventy one pound dollars. All heaven, all that. One more time. Seventy one. Now two, down two. Seventy one now three. Seventy table down three. Guess what? You're out again. If you've been as fast as my guy did online, we would be over a hundred thousand. <laughs> 72, 73,000. Now 74,000 of it. Now 75, 70, now 70, 70. You said no at 70,000. We're up to 76 already. I don't believe you. 77,000. 77 pounds. 76 pounds. 77 pounds. I'll bet he bids one more time. Bet what he bet. 77. 76 pounds. 77 pounds. 77 pounds. Well, folks, the last few years I've written so much about this, but 10 plus year old tractors with low hours, man, that's where the buying heat has been. And we saw that again today in our feature item, the 2008 New Island TJ384 wheel drive. 2,176 hours, sells very strong at 76K. All right, folks, time to share my three machine repeat 75% rules. Rule number one, when you're out at an auction and the bidding gets down to the final couple folks, we often see at every sale, the bidder will shake their head and walk away. You know what percentage of the time they wind up bidding again? Yep, 75%, and actually they usually bid twice more. Now my 75% rule number two deals with very low hour older tractors and even combines. We always assume that collectors are buying these things, but over the years I found 75% of the time, no, it's not collector, it's, it's just a farmer who buys it to farm with. Case in point, this amazing 1983 John Deere 8820 combine, only 15.5 actual hours on it, sold last June up in Beardsley, Minnesota on an auction, went for 75.5, and yeah, the guy that bought it, not a collector, just a dude from Texas that was happy as a clam to take it out to the field to harvest. Now my 75% rule number three, it's what I call my machine repeat ratio. You take the average auction price divided by the average dealer ad price, and the past 17 years historically it comes out right around 75%. So if the percentage is higher than that, that's a sure sign of a very hot item. And if you drift under 70%, that's an item that's not in as hotly in demand. Well, covering auctions for 30 years, folks, gotta tell you, I try to be colorblind. But that said, it was fun today to watch this shiny blue paint sell. And really strong bidding on the TJ380 at 76K and the T8010 at 66K. Now, I can't guarantee any blue paint, but tune into Machine Repeat next week. We'll have some fun. Machine Repeat thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. 
visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.